Hello everyone, my name is Maria Maza and I'm going to present the work entitled Ecosystem Biomass as a key parameter determining its coastal protection service. The co-authors of this work are Javier Lara, Fernando López Arias and Inigo Lozada. The main objective of this work is to find a new parameter, easy to be quantified, that allow us estimating the coastal protection service provided by different vegetation species. The standing biomass is the parameter that is going to be explored in this work. And why do we want to find this new parameter? Because the characterization of a vegetated ecosystem by measuring leaf traits, the biomechanical properties of the plants, and the number of individuals per unit area involves a lot of effort. On top of that, when we want to model this type of vegetated ecosystems, most of the models deals with a drag force. This drag force is based on a drag coefficient that usually is an unknown, especially for these complex real geometries and properties. So if we find this new parameter and we get a new relationship between this new parameter and the coastal protection service that the vegetation is providing, we will be able to get this coast to quantify this coastal protection service for different species, avoiding the use of parameters that need to be calibrated. So the work is focused on the uh, estimation of wave attenuation. Wave attenuation provided by different species of salt marshes. For each one of the species considered in this study, the standing biomass, defined as the weight per unit area, will be estimated. Then, sort waves will be also considered in this case to analyze the wave attenuation. So the first step was to select the different vegetation species that were tested in the lab. So different species along the Salmars were considered. Espartina, Salicornia, Juncus, and Alimione. These species, as you can see here in the pictures, are very, very different, not only in geometrical properties, but also in biomechanical properties. Some of them were very flexible, some of them pretty stiff. So with these four different species, species, we had a wide representation of the different species that we can find in a Salmars. Then, in order to get these species, we went to the field. So we went to different estuaries here in Cantabria to get these species. The field campaign was performed by taking the vegetation using these boxes. These boxes were 29 times 8, 19 centimeters, and they had uh, 10, centim 10 centimeters in height. That means that we were taking the vegetation with a sediment layer of 10 centimeters. Here you can see the box next to the meadow where it was taken. And as you can see, it was well representing the actual condition, conditions that we had in the, in the field. Then more than 100 boxes were taken in the lab, to the lab, to, uh, by using this type of vehicles, and they were introduced in the flume. So in total, 94 boxes were introduced into the flume to build a middle of nine meters length. A false bottom was built in advance in order to ensure a smooth, a smooth transition between the flume bottom and the vegetated area. Here you can see a picture of the four different species already located inside the flume. So we were measuring wave uh, free surface elevation along all the middle and all these blue lines are representing one free surface gauge. Also, we were measuring velocities offshore and onshore the middle. So a total, or a total area of around five meters, five square meters were tested 
for each one of the vegetation species. But we were testing two different densities for each one of the species. That means that we were locating all the boxes inside the uh, flume. This is a top view. And this is a top view of the second case where we were cutting half of the boxes in this way. The um, white boxes are the ones where we were cutting the vegetation from the top, as you can see in here, to avoid any damage in uh, the vegetation by removing before all the gauges and cleaning them up. So the whole process was performed in order to be able to test two different densities, that means two different values of standing biomass per species. So here we can actually see a picture of the three stages. We had the 100% density, 50% density, and then we were cutting all the vegetation to have also the zero case, the case where we had zero biomass. This standing biomass was obtained in three different stages. First, it was obtained directly from the field by taking five extra boxes that were taken directly to the bio lab to estimate this standing biomass. And then after this first cut, 10 boxes were um, uh, taken along the middle to measure again the standing biomass. And after this second cut, we were again measuring this standing biomass that was done to properly measure the, the value of the standing biomass and also to ensure that the properties of the vegetation were the same along the whole experimental campaign. Different wave conditions were tested, random and regular. In this presentation, I am going to present only regular wave conditions. So three different water depths were considered and this range of wave heights and this range of wave periods were also tested. So just moving into the results, what we can see here is an example of the wave decay obtained for 0% density, 50 and 100% density, in this case for Espartina, and for these specific regular wave conditions. So as you can see, the points are the measurements from the lab, and then a curve was fit fitted to these uh, points. Following the law presented by Dalrymple in 1984. So here we have the wave height along the middle, the incident value, and the x is the position along the middle, and beta is the damping coefficient. This damping coefficient was uh, obtained to fit this curves, as you can see in here. That means that for each one of the different conditions tested in the lab, we were getting one value of this damping coefficient. Then, in order to fulfill the objective that I was mentioning before, we were relating this damping coefficient to the standing biomass values. How did we get this standing biomass? We were obtaining the dry weight of all the different species, but then we were also considering the height of the different species. Why? Because as you can see here, this represents, represents Huncus, this could be Salicornia. They are very different with respect to the water depth. So in order to consider this relationship between the vegetation height and the water depth, we were normalizing the dry weight per unit height, and then we were multiplying that by the minimum between the water depth and the vegetation height. Why? Because if not, for example, Huncus was, uh, a, we were considering a standing biomass that wasn't actually affecting the, flume, the, the flow. So that is why we were considering only the portion that was affecting the flow. And then in order to consider the submerged ratio of the vegetation that was actually submerged under, different, under some uh, water depths, we were introducing the submerged ratio also in the equation. That means the ratio between the vegetation height, height and the water depth. That means that this, value, this ratio is smaller than one when we have submerged vegetation. With that, we were able to plot the damping coefficient for different wave conditions 
and the eight values of standing biomass that were tested in the lab. That means four species times two densities per species. And as you can see, a linear fitting was obtained for all the different regular wave conditions tested in the lab with very high correlation coefficients. That means that a linear relationship was obtained between the damping coefficient and the standing biomass. This was already reported in previous uh, studies, such as Boma et al. Uh, 2010 and Matha et al. 2015, but with only two species. So in this case, we were extending this uh, ratio of uh, standing biomass, and we were confirming these linear relations. But as you can see, in, as you were seeing in this figure, we had one linear relationship per wave condition. So in order to get a common rela linear relationship for all the different wave conditions that was, were tested in the lab, a new biomass called the hydraulic biomass was defined. In this hydraulic biomass, the uh, wave conditions were also introduced. We defined the length ratio that was the relationship between the vegetation length and the uh, wavelength. And then the, we introduce also the relative wave height, defined as the ratio between the wave height divided by the water depth. So then we were exploring the relationship between the beta coefficients and this hydraulic biomass. As you can see in the figure, the beta coefficient for the 96 cases tested in the lab was linearly related to the hydraulic biomass. That means that we were able to find a common linear relationship for the four species, the two middle densities per species, and the 12 conditions tested under three different water depths. That means that this new relationship allows us to get very easily the beta coefficient as a function of this hydraulic biomass. So what are the conclusions of this work? First, we confirm that the standing biomass is a key parameter determining the wave attenuation for different species. Also, that a linear relationship is obtained between this parameter and the obtained damping coefficient. That means that the consideration of this new parameter can be very relevant since it allow, allows getting the wave damping by knowing the incident wave conditions and the standing biomass. And the good news is that the standing biomass can be easily obtained. Actually, it can be obtained by remote sensing or even using aerial vehicle imagery. So this may represent a paradigm shift in modeling wave attenuation produced by vegetation fields. Thank you very much for your attention. This is a short video of one of the tests performed in this case with Espartina and uh, with the highest water depth. Thank you very much.